Kobe. Kobe Jabes. That was my dude. That was my fucking dude. He was your dude. God damn it, man. I'm so sad. Dude. And I don't get sad over celebrities, but this was my Bourdain. You've been less sad over family members. Oh, yeah. Dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate uh, to say that, but that's true. It's weird. Um, I, he was my fucking guy, dude. I just, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. I'll try to today because um, it seems ridiculous where you're like, you know, we talk about this all the time with celebrities' deaths where you're like, oh, man. Um, there's certain people, though, that mean more to you um, for different reasons. And uh, he was that guy for me, at least in L.A. Um, when I got to Los Angeles, uh, my very first job, we're, we're the same, Kobe and I are the same age. Um, my first job was at Staples Center. And I, I was a waiter for the luxury boxes. Um, I had had difficulties getting an agent when I moved to LA. And if you've heard part of this or, or some of this, forgive me, but um, uh, I had sent out like 300 headshots and resumes every two weeks, right? I got nothing. I got one call back from a commercial agent who was just like, are you really 6'3"? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, too tall for car commercials. I hung up the phone. Mm. So I had to figure out how to get an agent. I knew they all went to Lakers games. Lakers were the biggest thing in town. And um, Staples Center was just opening, brand new. They were leaving the form and going to the Staples Center. And I got a job there. Mm-hmm. Um, with that requirement, you had to be there you know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Typically, the games are at 7, 7.30 mm-hmm. on West Coast time. Mm-hmm. And every day I came into work for a Lakers game, there was one guy on the court, just one, shooting over and over and over again. And it was Kobe, Kobe Bryant. And uh, they ended up winning. The Lakers won the championship that year. And it was amazing. And the town went crazy. And to see somebody's work ethic. Yeah day in and day out like that every single day was amazing. And there was other young guys who would try to emulate him a couple of times. They'd pop in and try to do the workouts or try to match his workouts and uh, they couldn't. You know, it would last for a week or so and then it would just still be Kobe over and over and over again. And when he won the championship and he became massive, and again, we're the same age, I was like, man, I, I hope that I can do something that great um, that would be celebrated and blah, 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 right? Uh, it happened for me a short time after when I got my first movie with, uh, with a new guy. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, dude, as I'm going to these parties and premieres and all this stuff, I was like, if I made it, made it, like, it would be awesome if I was at the same party with Kobe Bryant. Like, mm-hmm. that would be making it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it happened. Mm-hmm. A, c- a couple years later, I get invited to um, uh, one of Puff Daddy's fucking white parties, right? Every celebrity and their mother was there. In their mother. Like, you name it. If a bomb went off, it would have killed all of Hollywood. And then Kobe walks in. And here's a dude my age with his wife. Um, here's a dude my age that, you know, I'm partying like a kid. So is everybody else there, like, including other athletes. Like Shaquille O'Neal was there. He was getting fucked up. There's some other athletes that were getting, you know, A-Rod. Those type of guys were there getting mm-hmm. fucked up. Uh, but Kobe wasn't. Mm-hmm. And he just seemed more mature than every single person there. And he was already married at like 23, 24 right. years old. And... The way he carried himself, like, and I got to meet him. You know, obviously, I fanned out, mm-hmm. and I went over, and I was like, man, I love watching you play, and I worked at Staples and all this other stuff, and uh, he was unbelievably down-to-earth and, and an awesome guy, and uh, he enjoyed what was going on at the party, but then he whispered something to his wife of like, hey, I got to work. Right. We got to get the fuck out of here. Right. Whereas everybody else stayed till 4 or 5 in the morning. Rage, like, he, he was not that dude, man. Mm-hmm. Um, where he could have been. Yeah. He was the biggest 
basketball player on the face of the planet. Like mm -hmm. he could have been, but he was always working. Um, oddly enough, like when I had success in Los Angeles, because it's all fucking ebbs and flows, right? Kobe had success. Like when he was winning, I was winning. When he had down years and shitty years with the Lakers, like I had shitty times. Um, and then to watch him battle back, it was in like 2011 that they, you know, after Shaq that he won another mm -hmm. title, uh, which ended up being the last one. Um, I was going through hard shit as well. And like whenever I write, the Lakers games would always be on in the background. Kobe's, Kobe would always be doing something spectacular. And I felt if I just worked as hard as Kobe, if I had the mm -hmm. same work ethic, the same things would happen. Again, good shit happened for whatever odd reason in LA at, at the same ebbs and flows as Kobe. Mm -hmm. And I felt like we had a similar work ethic, although it was two entirely different, different fields. Mm -hmm. Cause at this point it was writing. I knew my ticket had to have been writing. I figured you can outwork anybody acting wise and it still doesn't fucking matter. Like you gotta get picked out of 500 or however many people you're up against. But writing's a different story where you have a better chance if, if you work hard and keep pumping out a lot of content um, that you'd have a better shot at success. And watching him play every single night, I was like, all right, great. I can keep doing this every single night. And that work ethic stayed. Um, and then in 2013, they had, a, uh, they had a good team that was supposed to go to the playoffs, but the, the entire team was lazy. Kobe was getting older, and he kind of carried everyone on his back and was like, I'm going to get you guys to the fucking playoffs no matter what, and I really don't give a shit what happens, and all you guys can kind of just get the fuck out of my way. Mm -hmm. And I, again, same point in my life where I was kind of going through that of like, all right, these movies had started to come out. <coughs> What's the next thing? What's the next big thing? What should I be doing? And that's when I started writing the book. I'd never done it before. Um, I didn't even know if I could do it. It felt like climbing a fucking mountain. And it was just so fucking hard. Because a book is, this, is the equivalent of four movie scripts, five movie scripts, one book. And I'd written a bunch of movies, but not five in a row back to back on top of each other like that. And um, every night, I, look, Kobe was doing it behind me. I was like, I, I guess I can do this. So I just kept going as he kept going. And then at the end, um, he had essentially blew himself up. Uh, last game of, his last game of that year was game 80. NBA players play 82 games, tore his Achilles, and I mean, tore it on the court, but stayed, shot the two free throws. I don't know how, mm. made both of them, got off the court. Lakers made the playoffs that year. Um, he was crying in the locker room afterwards, still did a press conference mm -hmm. after a, a torn Achilles, which is he crazy. He came to me. back from that. Huh? He came back from that. He did. Yeah.